In 2019, for the first time, Apple had total control over both their software and their hardware. By releasing the M1 chip, Apple was boasted of really high performances at a really good budget. Of course, they wanted to kick Intel out, we all know that, but the M1 chip was a record-breaking technology. In 2021, they went ahead to release the new versions, which was the M1 Pro and the M1 Max. And as a content creator, I know staying productive is really important to all of us, both you and I. And our workflow from filming to production is something that we want to have a seamless experience. Do you always have to get the most current computer to do that? So in this video, I want to share with you why I think the Mac Mini from 2019 with the original M1 chip is the best budget computer your money can buy. Let's get going. You know, the Mac Mini has always been a very underestimated product from Apple. Even back then when they had the i5 and the i7 version, people still didn't know what it was. People still didn't see why it was convenient to buy it. It was very small, it didn't pack a lot of power, and it wasn't either a laptop, so you also had to go ahead and get monitors and stuff like that to make it run. People would usually end up building a computer or buy the Apple trash can, which has been discontinued. But the new Mac Mini N1 has a ton of good things. And on top of the list for me is the price. This computer costs $1,100 for the 16 gigabyte version. That is the version I own. For the amount of power you're getting from this little beast, there's no computer on the market that can outperform this computer at this price. The eight gigabyte version is even cheaper. That is going for $600 and you can get a refurbished from Apple at about $500, which is absolutely crazy. With the power that this computer has, at this price, there's no computer on the market that can beat it. And I know this is a ploy for Apple to get people to move from the Intel-based devices to the M1-based devices. So when they introduced these models, they made sure to give it a certain price point that would persuade people to make the switch because it was just too good to be true. So my first reason that makes the Mac Mini really, really attractive for content creators is the price. The second thing I like about the Mac Mini M1 is the performance on this little guy. It's absolutely crazy. At first, I wasn't so convinced, but I saw a friend use it, I watched a couple of videos, and then started to take a leap of faith to get it. And I've not been disappointed. I edit my 6K files from my Blackmagic Pro. I use complex apps like DaVinci, uh, Resolve, Premiere Pro, and After Effects, Photoshop, Illustrator, all these things to run really high quality graphics and high quality heavy duty work. And this machine takes it like a breeze. The performance that comes out of the Mac Mini is just unheard of. So if you're a motion graphic artist, you're a 3D artist, you're a developer, a programmer, a photographer, a filmmaker, you're if you're to content creation and basic video editing, you would definitely use this and wouldn't feel a stretch. The third thing that gets me very excited is how good the Mac Mini is at multitasking. You know, today everybody has about 50 tabs open, you're editing a video and um, Premiere Pro, you have some designs going on in Photoshop, you have some images open in Lightroom, you're color grading in DaVinci. I can do all of this whilst opening about 20 plus tabs and the computer will still run without slowing down or breaking. This is something I couldn't do on my previous MacBook i7, which cost me more money than I bought the Mac Mini. And it's absolutely crazy. The multi-taxing feature is something I absolutely love. Since I always run two desktops, I mean two monitors, I always have different things happening at the same time. And this computer just takes it so easily and makes my work that much faster. So that's the third thing I like about the Mac Mini. The fourth thing I like about the Mac Mini is the fact that it has enough ports for me to not rely on dongles. We all got crazy when Apple decided to put only USB-Cs on their laptops and everybody had to buy a dongle so they could adapt other devices onto their computers. But the Mac Mini comes with enough ports that you might not have to even upgrade or get certain dongles so you can connect your second monitor or your extra USB drives and everything. It comes with two USB-Cs, one HDMI, a display port, an ethernet port, two USB 3.0s, and it even has a headphone jack for it. So everything comes right in, and if you have to get a dongle, even if you're forced to get a dongle, you will get just one as an addition so you can do other things. Like myself, I run my computer from two 
12 terabyte hard drives which need separate slots because of the amount of power they are pulling so I needed extra USB-C ports so I got myself another dongle that could handle these things but that's very specific to me and most people would not have to get a dongle because it has all the ports that you need. The fifth thing on my list which is something most people also love about the Mac mini is the fact that for the first time Apple has taken control over the software and the hardware. Now the apps that run on the Mac mini are fully integrated to take total advantage of the hardware to give you the optimal performance that a Mac mini boasts, which are all optimized to run with the M1 chip and the results are mind blowing. I render 6K videos in record time, 4K videos like their 720p videos, it's just phenomenal. Heavy color grading, visual effects, motion graphics, all of these baked into one file but the render time is still record breaking which is something I find extremely pleasing because back when I had my i7, I would click render and go to bed, wake up the next morning and it's still rendering. But today I can literally render a 50 minute 6K file and it wouldn't take up to three hours or two hours to finish, which is something I could never have said with my previous i7 MacBook Pro. The last thing on my list is reliability. Apple is known to create computers that can last much, much longer. A typical Apple computer can last you about five years and save you so much money as compared to its Windows counterpart. So I believe that this is very similar to the other cases where this computer can stand the test of time. Its build quality is very durable. The performance on it is really phenomenal with the new M1 chip. And it just gives you that ecosystem you're used to, especially if you are somebody who's used to using Apple devices. It gives you that ecosystem where everything is connected, everything is seamless. You can rely on the computer's power to give you what it says it would give you. And you might not even have to upgrade because it really does what it says it would do. It's lightning fast and the performance is just top notch. So now the question is, should you get the M1 first edition in 2022? Well, the answer is yes and no. Yes, because if you're a high performance creator and you absolutely need more power and you're willing to spend the extra thousand plus dollars, yes, you can get the new M1 Pro and the new M1 Max because they are much, much faster than the first edition of the M1. If you're not a high performance creator and you don't have that much money to spend three thousand plus dollars on the M1 Pro or the M1 Max, I can assure you that the first edition M1 will give you enough power to run anything that you might be handling right now. Like I said, I still edit my 6K Blackmagic files on the original M1 and I have no complaints at all. Definitely there are heavier files than this that make working on it very difficult, but it's still much better, especially for the fact that I'm spending just a little over a thousand dollars to get the performance I have right now. So if you decide to get the Mac mini M1, which version should you get? Um, I would recommend you get the 16 gigabyte version with about 512 gigabyte of SSD storage space. And that is the version that I have and it cost me $1,100 to get that piece. And you later have to get the keyboard and the mounts and maybe some monitors to pack everything together. And don't get me wrong, I will still want to get my hands on the Mac mini, um, the M1 Pro and the M1 Max. But is it worth the extra dollar? Well, currently at the rate of my production, I don't think it's worth that investment. Maybe later on in my career, as I really begin to need high quality and high performance machines, maybe I might look that way. But even then, am I willing to spend $3,600 on a laptop? Maybe I might as well spend that money building my own computer that can run really high, heavy files. Maybe, but that is just my thoughts. So if you decide to go for the Mac mini, I recommend you get a 16 gigabyte version with about 512 of SSD storage space. The thing about MacBooks is they don't really give you um, a good high amount of storage space. But with the Mac mini, they decided to give you the option to upgrade to two terabyte of SSD space for a really unrealistic amount of money. I'd rather spend that money on a six or eight terabyte SSD on Amazon and just slot it into the USB slots and just get extra space because that is much better way to spend your money than to upgrade it on the Apple website for an extra $400 <laughs> or more, I'm not so sure. But yeah, that's what I'll do. So yes, that's it. If you're on a tight budget and you're looking for the best computer money you can buy in 2022, I still highly recommend you take a look at the Mac mini 2021 one version. So that's my thoughts on the Mac Mini. For those of you who disagree, I want you to put down in the comments below which computer do you think can outperform 
the 2019 first edition Mac Mini. That will cost you under $1,200. Leave it down below and we can compare to see if it can actually outperform the Mac Mini. I doubt it, but I guess. Let's see. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you again next time.